Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all the other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will, not per you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now, I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it off. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, ang first and second Sunday of Lent ay constant. Ibig sabihin, they are the same throughout the three-year cycle. But the third, the fourth, and the rest will have its own, we may say, gospel. So today, the thread that actually flows through our reading is the word repent. The repentance is called yung pagsisisi ang pagbabalik loob. Sisters and brothers, disasters, catastrophes that were devastating that struck our country during the few years. You have Ondoy, you have Yolanda, you have the earthquake in Baguio that took hundreds of lives. Sisters and brothers, the disasters and catastrophes in the life of people. Today's Gospel gives us two other examples of disaster that happened in the life of Jesus. One of the incidents was the ruthless murder of some Galileans while they were in the middle of their temple sacrifice. And the other incident was a construction incident which happened near the temple during the building of an aqueduct in a way uh, near in Siloam. Apparently, it was a big building that our project hated by the Jews because temple funds were taken by Pilate to finance it. These two incidents, sisters and brothers, were brought up by Jesus because the Jews presumed that those who were killed were being punished by God for their sins. And, but Jesus denies this. Instead, he asserts 
that what really destroys life is our unwillingness to repent and change our lives. That is what destroys life. All the incidents, accidents, and all this, it is a call to repentance. He wants to remove the notion that misfortune is necessarily a punishment for sin. No, sisters and brothers. Rather, Christians should not wait for death to come and cut them off guard while outside the state of grace. Jesus uses the stories to make us realize in a way that death can come anytime. Today, tomorrow, tonight, death will come. It will not choose according to some standard, uh, but all of us are subject to the same leveling off. Time is indeed of the essence when it comes to conversion. That is why St. Paul asks us uh, to repent and to be converted. Jesus says that once but twice by way of emphasis of the uh, uh, by way of emphasizing the topic unless you repent you will all perish as they did the repetition of this teaching is followed by a parable the parable of a fig tree sisters and brothers you all know what is a fig tree young eagles you will say Usually, it takes a fig tree three years before it bears fruit. It is not producing fruit by that time. It likely never will, and so it was to be cut down. But this fig tree had already been given twice the allotted time, the fig tree here in the parable. It has been given twice the allotted time, the number of years it takes to produce fruit. For the owner of the vineyard had allowed three more years to pass a fruitless expectation. The gardener or the caretaker asked for one more chance. Isa pang pagkakataon. The gardener will do, e do even more than is necessary to help by cultivating and manuring it all. This on the ground of a perhaps or maybe it would bear fruit. So the gardener is asking for one more chance. Perhaps or maybe this year it will bear fruit. Sisters and brothers, the parable of the fig tree is a perennial one for us. Every Lent, God gives us one more chance to produce more fruit in our lives. God is more than generous with the opportunities He gives us to reform our lives. St. Augustine, you see, the great sinner and the great saint used to pray before his conversion, Lord, give me chastity, but not now. He is asking for chastity, but not now. Maybe tomorrow or maybe next two week. Sisters and brothers, here is emphasized the patience of God. God is patient. Pope Francis has said, Have you ever thought about the patience of God? Have you ever thought of His limitless concern for sinners? It is never too late to convert. Never. God's patience awaits us 
until the last moment. God is so patient. Pope Francis tells the little story from St. Therese of the child Jesus. When she prayed for the man who was about to be persecuted, to be guillotined, a criminal who did not want to receive the comfort of the church of the sacraments. He rejected the priest. He did not want forgiveness. And St. Therese prayed for him. And, all the, and, and when the moment of being guillotined or persecuted, the man turned to the priest, took the crucifix, and kissed it. At the last moment, the grace of God, in a way, went into the heart of this man to kiss the crucifix. He does the same with us, sisters and brothers. Naghihintay ang Panginoon sa ating pagbablik loob. God is always waiting for us. Do you have a picture of the prodigal son? The parable of the prodigal son. The father every day is looking for the coming of the son, the return of the son. The father always on the bend of the road expecting that the son who was lost will come again. The picture at the image of the patient God, sisters and brothers. Lent is the season of grace. As I have told you during the beginning of Lent, it is the springtime of the Spirit. Don't wait for tomorrow or another year or perhaps next month. God has already given us a lot of chances. Lord, one more chance. Ang palaging sinasabi ng tao, one more chance. Isa pang pagkakataon. Sisters and brothers, we need a deep change. Not only external acts, but conversion of the heart. One more year, one more month, one more chance. God is giving us today to learn to love, to follow and serve Him. The words, those who are praying, the office, the loads, the morning prayer, in the invitatory, we always hear, if today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. That words, in a way, echo. And this is a kind of calling and inviting us to repentance. God does not force us. He gives us freedom. That's the problem. Because God does not force and gives us the freedom. We have the free will to say yes or to say no. And to wait or not to wait. One more chance. We ask, like the parable today, the gardener asking Jesus for one more year so that the fig tree would bear fruit. Sisters and brothers, one more chance, one more opportunity, one more year. But if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Do not close your heart. Listen to his voice calling you to repentance. This is the moment. This is the time. This is the opportune time to return to the Lord God. Amen. That's all, son. I believe.